Earl. Uh, we are recording uh, Jenkins and Google Summer of Code Office Hours. Um, today is March 11th. So if you watch this recording, we have just one week left uh, before the student application starts. Uh, and we use all the possible time to help students with their project proposals. Uh, so today we will run a standard agenda and after that, of course, there will be Q&A. So if anyone has any questions about the projects, uh, please ask here. And of course, uh, we are ready to organize ad hoc sessions uh, like uh, this one, uh, like once we organized uh, last week. Okay, so we have a number of people on the call. I was just uh, go through the agenda. So the first item uh, which we discussed uh, at the previous meeting is about uh, collisions between uh, Jenkins and Continuous Delivery Foundation GSOC organizations. So we spent some time uh, to discuss that with CDF team and right now uh, all profiles are updated. Uh, so if you go to uh, okay, some of this code. So here if you go to okay I'll start the incognito. Okay, uh, so if you go to organizations, uh, now there is uh, an updated CDF page. We updated all the resources, and when you open the page, you can see that it redirects you uh, to the Jenkins project specifically here in the descriptions. And now, if you go to project ideas, um, uh, we fixed that as well, and here um, for Jenkins and Jenkins uh, X, again, it redirects us to our resources. So in the current state, we think that uh, the problem is solved. So students uh, reaching out to Continuous Delivery Foundation can find the Jenkins organization. And at the same time, uh, we started uh, channels uh, in Continuous Delivery Foundation so that um, we can um, uh, contact other projects and the CDF or admins quickly if any changes uh, are needed. So this is uh, the first update. And the second update is just about uh, my capacity. So no, I'm not stepping down. Actually, it's quite opposite because um, um, yeah, after some uh, discussions with other core maintainers, I will be reducing my involvement in Jenkins Core and other components for the next month so that I have more capacity for application reviews and for other meetings with uh, Google Summer of Course students. So um, sorry for all the delays. Uh, I hope I will have uh, more time. Okay, any other news and updates? Okay, do we have any new mentors on the call? I guess not. And action items. So last time uh, we discussed a few action items and I guess some of them are completed. So I submitted a pull request for Jumbotron. I haven't submitted a blog post yet, uh, but so it's still to do. Um, the recover Orc admin meeting is done. We have a meeting today right after um, uh, this call and after that we will be meeting for half an hour before every office hours and uh, Jenkins online meetup I'm not sure whether you've seen a message um, in the uh, JSOC public mailing list but now there is a doodle oh it's only for mentors right now but uh, yeah uh, we will be doing online meetup or two online meetups next week uh, to present JSOC, to present projects, and to do some q and I didn't send it uh, to the public main list right now because it's less important for students who have already reached out to the project because you already know a lot of details um, about the projects you're interested in. So for us, uh, the main objective for these meetups is to help uh, uh, newcomer students uh, uh, to uh, start quickly if they're interested. Uh, but uh, yeah. if you're interested, you're still welcome to join. And I will uh, forward the message uh, to the public uh, mailing list after the meeting. Uh, 
Uh, okay, uh, quick start for to meet specification gene regulator is, is still to do. Okay, that's it. Are there any other open action items um, I missed? I will likely be writing a blog post for Jenkins X. Okay. Nothing from my end. Okay. Thank you. And by the way, you probably missed it. Uh, uh, yeah. One thing uh, that uh, you ran Carol, into that a that that session uh, this weekend. All right, Mark? That's correct. Sorry, Can Mark, you, hear me you, okay? you went in yeah. and out. We couldn't hear you entirely. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hold on. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, yes, I did do a... Uh, with, there's okay. a university in so, Western Africa, uh, remote and it's part of the Google yeah. Student YouTube Developers Program. I did a presentation with them, uh, also a Q&A. Oh, sorry. And uh, if anybody else is interested, uh, just to do it uh, in your cities um, or maybe online, uh, taking the current situation or likely online, because for example, I had a plan to do a presentation in uh, Neuchatel, it's canceled. Um, but yeah, online events uh, are still doable. And I hope we will do one uh, Russian speaking event uh, next week. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, can you hear me now, Oleg? To this section I can from GSO because as we discussed, yes. And start it. Okay, a recording is all is started already, Mark. So you uh, get an action item to merge uh, two recordings now. <laughs> this is my action item. I will finish my update. I met with the wet uh, West South African uh actually I don't know if that was said right. And uh, a university in South Africa, and uh, we did a session about Google Summer of Code as well as a Q and A, and it was really good. It was well received. There was, I think, over a hundred people that joined, and that was it. Just really, really good. So I was very happy to do that. Mm -hmm. I can say that I was there, so I know it was really good. So, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, thanks a lot for doing so. And uh, yeah, uh, as uh, we discussed, uh, please uh, do such kind of promotions because it's really important, not only for Jenkins, but uh, for Google Summer of Code entirely. Because yeah, JSOC is 16 years old this year, but still there are students uh, who were not aware about it somehow. And uh, uh, spreading the word is useful because uh, more people uh, get opportunities. And yeah, JSOC is a really great program, whether you participate in Jenkins or not. I do have a question for Kara. Kara, for your Jenkins X blog post, are you going to be doing that under the Jenkins banner? I will be certainly publishing it on the Jenkins X docs and blog site, um, but I'm very happy to publish it under the Jenkins site as well. And certainly I'll be linking to the Jenkins site and, and okay. where all the projects are listed. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure it makes sense to repost it on the Jenkins site. Uh, well, uh, we definitely we will definitely do reports and whatever if if needed. Uh, but yeah, main uh, objective is Jenkins X because uh, right now Jenkins and Jenkins X have separate communities. Uh, well, uh, there is a lot of intersections, but uh, yeah, getting it posted on Jenkins X would definitely help. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else do we have? Um, so Jenkins Online Meetup basically uh, stays, so it's next week. Um, 
quick start for automatic specification generator again uh, it's actual though we discussed it um, at the meeting yesterday uh, but putting it uh, on the proposal uh, would be nice so sorry for the delays there uh, regarding the rest, um, one uh, I think which I didn't mention uh, in news, uh, it's mostly for work admins, is that this year we will need uh, to change uh, how we do the payments uh, because uh, we do not want to go with SPI this year. Um, well, we have SPI as a plan B, and thanks a lot uh, to them uh, uh, to giving us uh, such escape hatch. Uh, but uh, our main plan is to find a way to do reimbursements uh, to participants um, uh, through maybe community bridge or Linux Foundation resources, uh, because uh, yeah, uh, many people will be traveling, uh, many people will be doing the JSOX work and other things. And uh, right now with SPI, it takes uh, a while to get reimbursements. Uh, it's not a, a grumbling because uh, SPI is powered by volunteers, so they help us a lot, uh, but yeah, their resources are really limited. So by going with payments uh, driven by Linux Foundation, uh, we could uh, provide uh, do payments more quickly, maybe within uh, weeks uh, after submission. It's definitely better than the current situation. So. It's just heads up for, for mentors and students who experienced these problems in the previous years. Okay. Anything else to discuss before we go to Kwanae? Margie, was your session recorded on Saturday? I'm waiting for the organizer to get me the recording. I did ping them yesterday um, afternoon, which would have been their morning. Mm -hmm. I am waiting for that. Once I have that, I'll get that over to everybody and then also get a uh, tweet out. Yeah. Great, thank you. And thank you. You're for welcome. That. Okay. And before we move on uh, to Kone, um, does anybody want to discuss the application process? Uh, we have uh, some students uh, who participate in JSOC first time. Uh, so if you want, we can uh, do a quick introduction there. I will add a, a note in regards to the application process. When students that are on the call, if, if, you, if you're not aware that the proposal process is not a proposal that you send to us. You can send it to us for a review, and we're more than happy to we're more than happy to guide you through that. But this the pro application process actually goes to Google, and I just wanted to call that out. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to mention. So this is uh, the portal uh, summer with uh, summer of code with Google.com. Anybody can register there. So there are org admin mentor. Uh, and student interfaces, they're different. If I understand correctly, students cannot uh, log in right now. It, this feature will be available on March uh, 16th. And you will need to, to submit uh, your proposal through the website. So how it works, uh, you basically uh, register, you accept uh, the agreement. Uh, please make sure to read, read it carefully because uh, there are some mentions about eligibility and other things. Uh, so just double check it uh, to make sure that you're on the safe side. And after that, uh, you will be able to submit a proposal draft. So you do not have to submit your final proposal. You can firstly submit a draft. And uh, our recommendation is to do it earlier because in such case, firstly, org admins. Yeah, thanks, Martin. No. <laughs> Didn't work. Uh, okay. Uh, so. Um, yeah, in uh, this case, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, let's go back to that. So, when you submit uh, your proposal draft earlier, as ORC means, we know that uh, firstly you declare your intent to apply. 
uh, that is already something submitted. So in the case uh, your internet uh, gets turned uh, off um, for one week or whatever, you already have a kind of application. And as our means, we can prioritize the reviews, we can uh, prioritize uh, finding mentors, pinging them, uh, if we see that there are proposals staged. Because uh, we had a lot of discussions in the mailing list, but uh, these discussions stay discussions until the proposal is submitted. And uh, so our recommendation is to submit drafts earlier. Uh, if you dislike your draft, you can dismiss it later if you want. Uh, or you can submit your final application uh, later. For final application, again, it's recommended to submit it uh, not uh, 30 minutes before the deadline, but a bit earlier, because yeah, Google Summer of Code team does a great uh, work on scalability. I'm not sure how the site uh, works, uh, but still uh, the last hours of JSOC applications, so there is a lot of applications coming in and the site is quite slow. So better to submit earlier. Yeah, the application is say itself is quite trivial, so um, I think you will be able to do it quicker. Just don't uh, leave it till the last um, days. Any questions about that? Okay. And yeah, since we speak about applications, uh, I would like to open uh, this page again. So I know that uh, many students have already uh, reviewed uh, that um, student proposals. So here we have some documentation about what we expect. So it's based on the official GSOC student guide, uh, which you can use as a reference. But we also make some additional suggestions about uh, um, what we expect to see there. Uh, one of um, important topics is uh, disclosing your availability because it's one of our main retrospective takeaways. Uh, yeah, everybody has exams, uh, vacations, and other things. It's not a problem. Uh, we anticipate it uh, to happen, uh, not only in the case of students, but also in the case of mentors. Uh, but uh, it's nice to know it uh, in advance so that we can do planning uh, uh, carefully and uh, yeah, if you already have a full-time job uh, yeah, just think twice uh, before applying to JSOC because yeah, again uh, JSOC uh, is important but it's not as important as your career and or as your study uh, so uh, please focus on them first and if you have time uh, for JSOC it's much appreciated okay. JSOC is considered as full-time job and yeah, combining two full-time jobs is usually not a good idea. Okay, any questions before we move on? Okay, then Connie. So we have a few mentor, a few students on the call. Uh, are there any questions which we haven't discussed yet? Samiti, I'm muted. I'm so sorry. So uh, what I was saying is uh, that uh, the template uh, given on the student uh, uh, student guide, uh, is it a very hard requirement to follow it exactly? Or like if I cover all the sections, then I'm good? Mm, no, there is no hard requirements. Uh, so there is a, a Google Summer of Code student guide. And in this guide, uh, there is expectation, for example, deliverables are clear, uh, dates are clear. Why it's important? Because uh, your proposal is uh, what will be a base for evaluation. So that uh, Google um, uh, or card means uh, can intervene in the case if something goes wrong. So all of these plans are not slated in stone. Uh, you as a, men, uh, as a GSOC team, so students and mentors can make a lot of adjustments during community bonding and during coding. 
And what is our organization's approach is as long as everything goes well and as long as mentors are happy, we are happy. Uh, but sometimes something goes wrong. And this is when uh, these proposals um, get important because it helps everyone to evaluate um, uh, what was exactly planned. But even with a, without that, having clear proposal um, is important because uh, mentors will be reviewing it. So they will be making decisions based on your proposal, uh, based on uh, your uh, contribution history. It doesn't mean code contribution, but whatever discussions, uh, like uh, these meetings, etc. It's also uh, something we take into uh, account. But um, still final and clear proposal is what really matters uh, when we uh, get to the project selection. Because usually we have uh, much more good applications than we can accept. So there is a lot of uh, decision making which is going to happen in April. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody want to add something? Hello. Mm. Um, this is the first, my name is Ifoma. This is the first time I'm joining the meeting. So mm -hmm. my question is based on the proposal. So based on the um, documents or the things that are required. So you have like something that is expected of the student to achieve. So my question is, those things that have been expected for the students to achieve, is it supposed, are you supposed to like write the code, the code for those things and submit it as part of your proposal or is it just the things that you need to do after when you've been accepted? Because sometimes you see like implementation, people write step-by-step -step implementation of what they have done or what they would do. So I don't understand that part. Do you need to add those things? Are you speaking more in, uh, in relation to the machine learning project? Yes. Okay. You, there is no, we do not expect, I'm actually one of the potential mentors for that project. And I thank you for submitting your, uh, your interest in that project. We do not have a code requirement, but as a, one thing we do ask is to see in advance some things you may have worked on that could help show that you uh, have an idea or you have a solid foundation about the project but we do not expect code up front okay so the the step by step of what the students will be expected to achieve is not something you should do now in your proposal in yes. your proposal this is more of the logic of how you plan to achieve the okay. goal of the project, but not the actual implementation of it. Just more your your logic. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's no need. Sorry, I'm not done. So when you so there's no need to add implementation of how you want to do it. That you know you would add the implementation, but from a word perspective, I would do this, or in the first coding phase, I would do this. You're just basically saying what your idea of implementation for that project is. Okay, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Think of it more of it as, as I'm writing the specifications of how I'm going to do this body of work. Okay, yeah, makes sense, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have a quick, yeah. okay, sure. I have a quick question. Is there a page limit for the proposal? No. Okay. I Thank mean, you. I definitely don't want a thesis. <laughs> I'm, I'm only speaking from my review. A, a, a thesis or dissertation or capstone project. I, I think you need to think about this as you want to cover your abstract, meaning you're defining what the problem is. And then you're going to say, okay. here are the steps I'm going to do in the given framework. Sure. Yeah. So historically, we had uh, different uh, proposal sizes. Uh, I guess our maximum was about 40 pages or so. It's still uh, smaller than thesis, but definitely wasn't a bit uh, convenient for potential mentors to review. Mm -hmm. uh, smallest ones were just a few lines uh, or TV, CVs in some cases. Uh, but usually proposals take, let's say, from three to six pages. 
Um, okay. We really don't want you to deep dive into the implementation details. Um, it's nice to have some details because they show that you did a research about the project and uh, that you um, uh, understand what uh, would be need uh, to be done there, but uh, don't try it for the specification. It's needed at all, or not needed. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, if you go back to the original questions about code, uh, yeah, firstly, I second to what Marky said. We do not uh, require anyone to write code, but if code helps you to write a good proposal, just do that. If doing some contributions uh, to the project helps you, again, just do it because uh, it's really important and historically uh, the most of um, uh, accepted uh, students we had uh, did some contributions because it uh, really helps uh, to make a proposal of a better quality. It's your choice how you approach that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there is no strong requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Nothing for me. Yeah, yeah I had one um, for the custom service build proposal. Um, is there any plans for a further meeting? Because I was almost preparing a proposal draft. So like, is that possible? Could we have a doodle or something? Uh, yeah, we do it upon request. So if you request it, we can uh, do a meeting. Yeah, if, it, if it's possible. I mean, I could, I was just completing my draft. So I, I might have a mailing list by tonight. So if at all, if you could arrange one, that would really help. <laughs> Okay. I have some questions as well, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so one problem with that is that uh, everybody has limited capacity. So in my case, I already sent uh, six uh, GSOC related doodle invites okay. for the next week. Okay. And yeah, I'm not sure I will be able to do uh, just another meeting next week. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no, no issues. You can do yeah. it when with. Well, uh, there are the potential mentors, uh, but. So, yeah, I'll create a doodle. Or you could just ask uh, in the mailing list because there is an active mailing list about uh, uh, this project idea. Okay. Thanks, Ovi. Mm -hmm. well, actually, there is another option. There will be a platform seek meeting tomorrow. Amazing. Mm. So if you want, I can uh, put it uh, to the agenda. Yep, S sounds cool. I'll, I'll be attending that meeting. Okay. Uh, what what time is it in? Mm, I think it's non UTC or something like that. Just a second. Six, uh, Two p.m. UTC, I think, which is six a.m. Pacific time. Uh, no, it's actually non UTC. Uh, yeah, because uh, this meeting uh, time uh, changed. You can always uh, find it. Oh. Usually, uh, you can find uh, actual time here or on the Jenkins event calendar. So, uh, yeah, since uh, we're on this page, I will just uh, put it uh, to the agenda. It's 12 noon UDC, right? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so it's tomorrow. Okay, and again, if anybody wants uh, to have a discussion for projects you're interested in, just uh, request it in the mailing list. There is no need uh, to wait uh, till the next office hours to do that because uh, yeah, in such case, you lose a week. And the first uh, mailing list request uh, as good as uh, requests on the call. Okay. 
Okay. Anything else for today? I see there is something in chat. Make a mental note. Ah, okay. Making mental note for Martin's birthday present. Uh, plus one. <laughs> Okay, so if uh, that's all, I think we can close down the meeting. So again, uh, welcome to summertime uh, to Americas. And in the case of Europe, we go to summertime, uh, I believe in two weeks. So it's always a, an interesting meeting in JSON because it's firstly a critical meeting. At the same time, uh, everybody has a mess in their calendars because of time zone changes, uh, but we will try to figure it out. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Too easy. Okay, then uh, you get 10 minutes of your life back. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. Um, so see you, you next week or at one of uh, the meetings we are going to schedule. So there will be a lot of meetings over the next two weeks and uh, again, there is no mandatory meetings. You as a student uh, decide uh, which meetings you want to, uh, to attend. Uh, well, if you're a mentor, we actually kindly ask you to attend to the meetings related to your projects. Uh, but uh, yep, as students, you just uh, prepare your applications and uh, this is your main and the only priority for the next uh, two weeks. So whatever helps, just let us know. We'll uh, do our best to help you. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. See you all online. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.